Welcome back, everyone, to Kaiserreich, Argentina. And, uh, yeah, we have skipped ahead a little bit. Uh, hold on, I'm actually just... Uh, right now, I'm just kind of getting my timer on so that I don't go, like, you know, 50 minutes of recording. Yes, yeah, so we have uh, been progressing forward a little bit because pretty much nothing was going on. I have gone through some of my focus tree, some of my research, now have five research slots, you know, going ahead at full speed. We have completed our infrastructure projects, and we are uh, making our army great again. Our divisions are now up to 14-2. We're still having some difficulties getting, uh, actually, enough artillery to go to 14-4, and four, but that's fine. That is very fine. And uh, right now, we are justifying a war goal on Ecuador. And uh, Ecuador is going to be a tough fight because of the terrain, but who knows, who knows. It might be easier than expected. Hold on. I want to see if you have a division there. Because, uh, you know, I'm kind of dependent on that landing for this war to go well. If you, uh, if you notice that pop-up, there is the second Weltkrieg going on right now. And actually, the Russians have decided to join in, which is very surprising. Usually, that does not happen. Uh, they're having some problems, though. Petrograd has been taken by the Finns. And, uh, yeah, so right now, Sixty Vladimir is not going to have a good day. The Commune of France is doing fine, the Italians are doing fine, but the, United, uh, the Union of Britain, as always, is just not being very great. Just not being very great. Uh, they are taking, though, blood, toils, tears, and sweat. So they're trying to, uh, trying to defend themselves, at least. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the great global Entente is uh, very scary. Very, very scary. Well, Sino Coalition. Whoa! You don't usually see this con uh, this collection of um, this collection of drinking partners. You have the Qing Empire, the Shangqing Tianguo, and the National Protection Alliance all working together. There is also uh, a war between the Indo-Chinese Union and the Co-Prosperity uh, Co Sphere, who's also trying to take China itself. So yeah, a lot of the people around the world are fighting. We have a Dravidia Nadu fighting the Princelies. And uh, because of that, the game is lagging to a crawl. And it's difficult to get enough, you know. But yeah, at least we are progressing with our production. We are progressing with our production. We're starting to get tanks, finally. And we have our uh, cavalry division actually modified with tanks. Uh, it is still relatively bad, but hey, 138 breakthrough. Uh, it's not going to be all that useful to fight uh, neither uh, Ecuador nor Colombia. But who knows, maybe one day. Oh, good. So, we have the justification for Ecuador finished, which is great. And, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get some encryptions. Going, uh, we shall declare war, justifying calling in our allies. We have formed the Buenos Aires Lima axis with Peru, so that is great. And now we can. Oh, you do have a division there. Oops. Well, then, how about. You two starting from here, going there. Oh, there. Instead. So we're going to have that, and um, yeah, he, he estimates that it's going to be an easy fight. I don't see it this way. We're going to see, though. Let's see if we can... This is a fort. Wait, what? Oh, I guess the call to arms is being kind of a derpy derp. Okay, let's go. So we have called him in, and actually, his divisions are moving in first. Which is fine. Let's help him. Not sure why a mountaineer was placed here, but that's okay. There we go. Attacks all across the line. Let's use force attack. 
and try to breach their lines. Uh, one thing that actually I should have done is leave my main fleet, because I don't think that... Yeah, they do not have a fleet, so... I should have... You just on patrol, and then I should have my main fleet... My Ara. I should have them be a... Uh, where are you? Oh wow, yeah, you're all the way over there. Should have them use um, shore bombardment. But yeah, it looks like the enemy divisions are just not up to the task of defeating our glorious uh, big divisions. Which is why you build big divisions. And slowly but surely, we will defeat them. Now, it will be at the price of some losses. But we're gonna see at the end if it's gonna be worth it. Well, it's definitely gonna be worth it because it's gonna add an ally to our uh, collection. A new ally to my collection. But, you know, we're gonna see if the other things are gonna be worth it. Because another reason why I'm doing this war is so that I can capture their stockpiles of equipment. Now, they only have one factory, and they actually have 10 divisions on the field. So perhaps they have a lot of... Um, they have a lot of unused equipment, but most likely not. We're gonna see, though. Okay, you have all joined in. Go for Quito, the capital. <clears throat> and uh, try to see if we can knock them out of the war relatively quickly. Uh, who has joined? The 13th Division. You are a reserve. You're not that useful then. Move up, and you now can also help in Quito. So just getting in all of the attacks. Uh, you're already. Someone is already going there, so someone should go there and take Ibarra. So that, again, we have more uh, VPs taken. And there we go. So the enemy, uh, the enemy, the allied cavalry has decided to get in there. That's great. Precision strikes. We're going to increase the soft attack of all of our army. Because it's going to increase the soft attack of our, or rather the attack skill of our leaders. Production costs plus 5%. I do not like that. So what we shall do is we shall strive for autarky. Because uh, uh, I've actually checked what um, both the autarky and the, I guess, um, foreign trade categories here do, the decisions here do, and the foreign one, the foreign manufacturers one is good, like it's useful, but it's not nearly as useful as the autarky one, partially because of the way the autarky. Um, the autarky like factory output is just so great you know 23 percent something or i don't know so yeah 23 percent factory output very very good of course and yeah we are slowly but surely taking in there lack of funding of our navy recent government adjustments to the military budget have brought our navy spending down to dangerous levels well this has greatly empowered the military and development of land-based weaponry officers from the ara have warned that or warned us that further pulling down the budget could have dangerous consequences on the prowess of our fleet. Yeah, because right now we are army dominant, but that's that's gonna be that's gonna be fine. We're gonna survive this. Come on, stop attacking me. You're losing. Also, I should probably stop attacking there because I'm losing. Oh, good. Looks like we have our divisions moving through, and so they can help in these other different attacks, and their army right now is just employ um, is just kind of um, embattled on so many different fronts, they can't really do too much. So now we're gonna take Guayaquil, and nab that port for ourselves, we're gonna take Quito, and that should be the end of the Ecuadorians. So we should also start to justify on, um, on Colombia which is going to be a very annoying, very, very annoying battle to face. And yeah, it looks like we are not really losing that much, or not as much as we could be. Equipment losses so far. Uh, equipment lost, looks like, eh, 2,800. Let's see if this is going to be worth it. Oh, I did, I did not even see how much equipment did we just seize. Uh, looks like around 800 something. Hold on.
have to close my door because the wind is just being a derp. Anyway, so we have taken Ecuador. Also, the Union of Britain has capitulated, of course. Of course. Oh, man. I mean, really? Can you not just, for once, use strat redeployment to avoid attrition? My god. This is always so annoying. No, stay there. You guys go down. And then you two go up. And then you... Why are you not using strategic redeployment? Seriously, it is a long distance movement at peacetime. There's no reason for you not to use strategic redeployment. Oh my god. How annoying. He's just literally losing equipment for nothing. Oh well, that's fine. Um, the Marines, what can they do? The problem with Colombia is that they only have ports in the north, so in the Atlantic. And we're in the Pacific, so yay, of course. I mean, at least this means that we do not have to fight their fleet. I guess that's kind of nice. And we're, I guess, gonna have... No, that's not a good idea. Or, oh, wait, right, I'm an idiot. I am a big idiot. We could just, uh... Because I don't think... No, you're not gonna be protected by the Entente. We could just try to land on the other side. Break on through to the other side. Like, oh, no. Well, I guess, um... Uh, I guess not. Although, I mean, this fleet can do something there. The fate of Ecuador, we need to take that decision. You do have troops there, but we could land here and try to seize Cartagena. Now, to do that, we will need a reinforcement from you, most likely. At least two of my large width divisions. Well, at least one of my large width divisions. Um, apparently, you have a plan. Delete all order. Delete all orders. Make a new order. Like that. Now I'm gonna take a bombardment squad, which is gonna be. Heavy cruisers have free shore bombardment only. Wow, that is not that much. I guess uh, one of the battleships and the four heavy cruisers. They can be a bombardment fleet um, and stay there. And then the rest of the ga what? Apparently, I just need to have the whole fleet together to have the range work out this way, which is really retarded. But yes, uh, we're going to be fine with that. And once the troops are actually landed, I can take the fleet off of what it was doing and then just use it as a shore bombardment tool. Okay. Concentrated Industry 4. Let's first do assembly line production so that our, you know... Our glorious production is going to be stronger. But yeah, I am very sad that we would not seize that many artillery pieces. In fact, we have lost more artillery pieces than we have gained. And honestly, it's very weird how we're not producing enough. Because we're producing five per day. Like, that's not, that's not that bad. But oh well. Gonna get more uh, steel from the United States, although, of course, once we finish this strife for autarky, we are gonna finally get some uh, steel production. Now, what are your units composed of? Looks like just infantry. So, yeah, we can just push through them, honestly. 
I hope that they're gonna try to, like, attack me or something first. But, yeah, we can just push through them because our troops are superior. And our tanks would be very worthless in this terrain. We'd just lose them. And uh, they're precious, so let's not lose them. Let's not do anything stupid with them. I can, however, um, like start to make them as I want them to be. Because uh, right now we have enough. Yeah, we have enough mediums. Oh, good. So 20 with, you know, 5 cavalry, 5 uh, tanks. And the reason I'm doing cavalry is that I just simply don't have the industrial capacity to produce motorized. And the medium tanks are going to do the, you know, job anyway. They're going to do what they need to do. Now, in terms of my chief of the army, who should I go for? I'm actually very much thinking of my uh, supply consumption being reduced as a very, very great thing. And division organization going up also pretty great. Although, it doesn't seem like we actually have any supply issues supplying right now. So, but perhaps just division attack. I mean... Division attack is just never bad. It helps out everyone. And yeah. I'm thinking that. So decisive battle doctrine. And there we go. So we completed strife for autarky. And then we are going to now do export to South America. No, 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 no. One civilian factory. We're going to do that first. We're going to do first a civilian factory. And, ooh, the fate of Ecuador. 14 days. Liberate Ecuador under a friendly government. Uh, of course, that has kind of derped my plans, which is very annoying. Okay. At least the naval invasion seems still seems to be this, this way. Um, we have not seized any fighters from them, although we have seized tactical bombers from someone. Overstrand. Yeah, I think these might be Ecuadorians. So, yeah, close air support, I guess. Man, Colombia is going to be such a slug. I hate fighting Colombia. I just hate it. I think everyone hates it. So, anyway, now we have um, these decisions, these striving towards self sufficiency. While the agricultural power of our nation goes without saying, much of our raw resources and industrial equipment is shipped in from abroad, making us dependent on our trade partners to meet our needs. To combat these issues, the government has outlined five-year plans in which we will build up and develop our heavy industry and most importantly fix our steel deficits. So we shall take preliminary excavation studies. And uh, now we also need to start the immigrant shopping of the year. <laughs> Lavinia Dam is almost finished, and, uh, ooh. What do you mean Black Monday no longer plagues our nation? It does no longer plague our nation. Or, I guess, uh, Downturn Halted needs to be turned into, uh, Reinvigorated, no, sorry, Trade Security. I guess, I don't know. I'm researching battleships because battleships are great. Battleships are pretty great. And so what I'll do is I'll try to get myself some battleships for my navy. Because I will just not have the industrial capacity to actually produce uh, naval bombers. So aircraft carriers, out of the question. Might as well just use battleships. Yeah, Swiss immigrants. Uh, our political power gain is still pretty good. Still very, very good. You know, 1.43 per day is just so amazing. Uh, we can actually now attract Dutch and Germans uh, because of the Second Weltkrieg. Or actually, no, the, the Dutch because the uh, Batavian Commune has somehow taken over. And, ooh, looks like the Commune is going to lose. And that means that the Russians are going to lose. You know, this would be great if uh, the Germans also, you know, happen to declare war on the Entente. If they do not, this is bad because Brazil is in the Entente. Ooh, looks like the Social Democrats won this time. So they're going to do a bit of... Um, 
a bit of radical centrism and just get so many bonuses. Yeah, radical centrist Brazil is going to be dif difficult to deal with. Freedom of the press, weakened unions. Plano de metas. Yeah, this is bad. <laughs> Local tax breaks. Let's see if they still have... Yeah, they still have that. So they can, it looks like, just continue to have bonuses of one government when you're when you're taking another one. So I guess if the next time they pick the Republicanos, Republicans, they can do all of their stuff as well, which is... Ooh. And then if they pick the Liberal Democrats as well, then they can do all of those things. So Brazil is going to be in the late game just so ridiculous. Well, it's good that we're gonna kill them first, I guess. Anyway, now we're starting to finally ramp up artillery production. And yeah, we can finally uh, switch around to at least a third artillery um, piece. Third artillery, sorry, um, battalion. And looks like the Bolivar Manifesto. Yeah, he's trying to make, uh, you know, great Colombia great again, or whatever. Oh, 31st of December. And Iran declared... Wow, that's late. <laughs> okay. That that Iran, though. Tajikistan. I have no idea. Anyway. Uh, let's attract... At 40 political power, we're going to attract the Italians. So And the Portuguese. So our immigration factor went up to 130%. So we get more people. Yeah, Iran with the Qajar... Um, Kajar absolutist path can get quite a lot of claims, and so now they're starting to finally get their acts together and declare war on people, though they have been doing that. And Tajikistan being free and a puppet of Iran, okay, that makes sense. Coup of 1941. Immigration report. Oh, and foreseen by Carles, this morning he was awoken by the marching boots of 8,000 Argentine soldiers who had gathered on the Plaza de Mayo. Organized by the members of the GO, the General Ramirez took the lead of the coup, quickly organizing their forces to seize key locations in the cities before Carles could react. With the majority of the loyalist soldiers on the borders planning to the next offensives, little to no troops were left in Buenos Aires region, leading to a quick and decisive strike on government facilities. Upon arriving at the Navy Petty Officer School of Mechanics in the neighborhood of Nunez, the group was attacked by loyal forces who were entrenched there, resulting in the death of 30 and wounding 100, but ultimately in the surrender of the Ara forces. Having surrendered the Navy School of Mechanics, the remaining Argentine generals received the re rebel leaders and declared Ramirez, President of the Republic, by noon. Carles, while able to escape the rebels' troops, boarded a small fishing trawler and set off to Peru in the hopes of finding an ally in their regime. Oh, crap. Changes the national focus tree to Argentina Democratic. Completes focused rig rigged elections. And we are now paternal autocrat. Whoa. Okay, so our political stuff is now completely different. Okay, some... Uh some immigrants. Uh, he's fled to Peru, but Peru is part of the Buenos Aires Lima axis. At least we're, yeah, we're still doing this. Okay. Can we still take the foreign policy? No, we're, because we are the go. Oh, no. How can we reduce the go? So we, okay. We automatically have rigged elections. The Liga Patriotica is bloody incredibly popular, so Ramirez being in power is just bad. <laughs> Military supremacy, so at least we get a lot of uh, a lot of that. But yeah, right now our stability is just not non existent. Ties with Germany we can only have if Crackdown on socialism, conservative values, restrict the press. Oh, this is just so bad. And we were even doing this re uh, reinvigoration, but that's kind of just remove that. Oh, well, time to take successful counter coup. Carles and his fanatics have been deposed, and the people are once again to free, free to choose their own destiny. Well, not really. 
I would have rather had liberals. Oh, Carles arrives in Peru. So, su successfully arriving in Peru after he was ousted only last week, Carles has been able to secure temporary asylum in the nation whilst Peru decides on an official response. While his trial is being prepared in Buenos Aires, President Ramirez has officially requested his extradition from Peru. Accused of high treason, corruption, and other crimes against the Argentine state, it is fairly clear that his, his extradition would lead to an immediate incarceration and the end of his political career. Request the extradition, and they did do so. Good. So, we gain authoritarian democracy popularity, which is good. You know, this isn't all bad, but, like, it's annoying. <laughs> it's very annoying. Because I would have loved to do some more of this, you know, or, uh army, like, uh, no, not army, but, uh, foreign policy things, you know, th these are good, like, they're actually pretty good, you know, war support. We can attack these guys even without doing that, but, you know, further security measures on the Uruguay border, following the ascension of Ramirez to the presidency and the increased persecution of union members and Liga Patriotica sympathizers, hundreds of our citizens across the Uruguayan border in an attempt to flee justice. Uh, the government has direct decreed extra reinforcements to the border guards and has deployed f uh, further divisions to the, of the Gendarmeria to assist while patrol boats of the Prefectura are sailing in front of the Uruguayan coast to pick up any refugee ships. No one shall ex escape justice. Oh, God. I wonder if... Ooh. Yeah, R Greater fucking Romania is uh, being established. Apparently they're a authoritarian democrat, but they have they have retained their folks tree somehow. Wait, no, this is no, no, yeah, yeah, okay, this is the Iron Guard folks tree, but they're authoritarian democrat. I don't know, uh, and uh, they can't recreate the Belgrade Pact. <laughs> and uh, oh well, I mean, it looks like uh, Serbia is gonna suicide against puppet uh, Bulgaria. Bulgaria is a puppet of Romania. And uh, maybe the Turks are gonna suicide against this, so maybe, I don't know, maybe they're like, maybe some of their things will make more sense soon. Anyway, they have defeated the socialist Greeks, and ooh, you have joined the Donau Adria Bund, Albania. Looks like you have the progressives in power, who are not progressive at all. Anyway. Yeah, this is just not very good. And, oh, the Austrian Empire has declared on Socialist Italy. Uh, Socialist Italy is already having problems with uh, Legionnaire Italy, but... Looks like the Austrians have declared on that as well, and so the Austrians have joined the Second Weltkrieg as well on the German side. Successful counter coup, yay. Crackdown on the Liga Patriotica. or stability on the streets, perhaps that's better. Anyway, that's gonna be the end of the part. I wanna thank you all for watching this ridiculous instability. I hope that you've enjoyed, and uh, I will see you soon with hopefully, I don't know, who knows what this path is gonna take us into. I'll see you soon.